Welcome back. This tutorial is on the rest of the textures for the ship. If you like these tutorials or find them helpful, then please remember to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell icon to be notified when I post new tutorials. But if I go in here and enable my um, proportional editing, and then I, I changed this, that normally it's at smooth, I changed it to linear, right? And then I hit S, but I didn't move my mouse yet. My, my scale was down to something like this earlier. So I brought it up so that I knew that I would affect the whole thing, and then I reduced the scale. Why isn't it linear? How about constant? Oh, I know. Shift S, cursor to selected, and then change this to 3D cursor. So I want my linear back. Scale. All right. And it does it. Just when it gets to be about the same angle as this, that's fine. I'm going to turn off my proportional editing. I'm going to scale Y. Oops. I'm going to select all of it. Scale Y. All right. And then I think I did it again. A, one, zoom in on the end. B, seven. All right. Actually, hang on. It really does actually look pretty good. It meets up on both ends. It's got them both covered. And then I I put a uh, a camera over the area. Where is my camera? Wow, okay. <sighs> so shift A, add camera. Go to your camera settings, turn on orthographic, go to one, grab Z, control zero, and now take this to like one. All right, too much. So we can go up a little bit. Marvelous. And what I did was I rendered that. And I get a grid pattern in the shape of my impulse engines. I saved that and, exp you know, saved it as an image file. I called it, I think, I don't know, impulse bump PNG. There. It's very similar to, to what I had done over here. You can you can see how similar it is. Um, and then I took that into uh, GIMP and I inverted it. We're done with our lower saucer. Here is my image. And I also of course. Took this section here and I created my UV the 
the image editor, get whatever, get rid of whatever's there. And I, I had this, right? So I simply laid the, I exported this, UV export, and I made it a decent size. Um, and I went into uh, GIMP. So there's my, so this light colored thing down here is my UV export from GIMP. This white one here with a black background is what I ex exported as a render inverted, right? You go to color and invert. Um, and I did it against the black background because I had a section over on the right hand side. I had to, I had to maneuver this over my, over my UV export. I didn't have them perfectly lined up. So this all, all out here is black. And where I want it to bump up is white. All right, so, I, so then I save this as an image. It doesn't matter about what's in the center because there is no, there is no model there. I deleted it. All right. And then I uh, did very similar to what I did with the upper and lower uh, saucer. I went into uh, textures, and I know it says impulse uh, engine plus bump, but what I really did was I deleted what was there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't delete it. There, I, I had the dark gray um, material material applied to the uh, impulse engine, and I still do. Um, let me tab out of that and close this up. So this is dark gray, and so is this area that I'm putting the bump map on, right? And it's, it's only like one quarter covering each end, you know, and half in the middle here. Uh, and then... Um, as you can see, you can actually see the bump map here. Uh, it actually extends out just a little bit, but if you go to 7 and then you go to the uh, rendered view, you can actually see the bump map applied. Uh, oh, and I'm also... <laughs> hang on. Turn this off. There we go. So there's my bump map. And uh, I I did some changes. I, I, I pulled the strength down a lot for the bump map. So here's, here's what you do. Once you've named whatever, your, whatever you want to name your texture, right? I called mine Impulse Engine plus Bump. It started off as the medium gray. So then I hit plus here, renamed it and then hit control left mouse key to come here. And here was the diffuse and the material output, and that's it. So what you do is you add an image texture. I went in and I named, I had named that export from, uh, from GIMP, I called it Impulse Cloth. I tried it, yes, no less than four times. I think I actually did it five or six times. And then it's a color image. It's, it's, it's four colors, and we want a black and white image to control the strength of the bump map. So I added a converter, Shift-A. So the, uh, the texture was an input image texture, right? So texture, image texture, Shift-A. And then this uh, converter here, this RGB to black and white, red, green, blue to black and white, Shift-A, converter, and RGB to black and white, right? And then you can pull this bump out of vector, I think. Vector, bump, and you connect color to color. The outgoing grayscale value, the black and white value to height for bump, okay? And then you take that normal and you put it into the normal of the diffuse medium gray texture 
uh, material. And this is already connected for us. So if you were uh, looking at it from 7, right? And when you did your export, you did it project from view. And you line up your cloth black and white uh, image bump map with your um, with your UV, you will get a bump map on here as if there as if this was covered with cloth just like the real thing. And it works fairly nicely. Um, there's a little stretching here. Uh, I could uh, go back in and and change my uh, bump map to be have all these lines a little closer together here. Uh, but it, you know what? It looks pretty good, um, and I'm going to leave it. So I'm going to turn my background down to zero again. All right, great. So that one's tough. Oh, <laughs> hang on. There we go. Um, the BC deck and the bridge are really pretty simple. Again, I just did each one separately project from view. So here's the here's the bridge. I mean it's simplicity itself, right? Hull gray. So here's the UV that I exported. You know, straight down shot, project from view. I put some some brown around it and, and fuzzed it with a Gaussian blur. And uh, then I created um, I kept calling it space dirt, but they were actually clouds. So uh, first space dirt, I was going to paint in streaks. And I thought, why not try and create some clouds? So here's how I do that. So here's sample clouds. All right. Way up top. I'm going to uh, filter artist uh, decor, decor, fog, right? You can change the turbulence, so I up the turbulence to 5.5 and hit OK. I don't know why, but when I do this, uh, if I try and change the color of the fog, it crashes. So I get this, and instead what I do is I go to color and saturation. I just take my saturation down to zero. OK, and then I go back to colors, and where you brightness and contrast, I guess. So brightness down to zero right and I think I left my contrast alone now you can color that if you want by going to color and uh, hue chroma so chroma you can change you can increase it and suddenly you get color hue is the color that you set so take it down to you know, brownish and then you can change how light you want it to be or dark so I like my space dirt about like that. And then there's another blur filter in here. So filter, blur, and zoom, which is great. Now, if I turn my bridge UV on, I can actually see where my, my bridge model is. And I want all of this major dirt in the back here. So I've got my clouds layer selected. I'm going to go to Layer, Transform, Rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Terrific. I'm going to go to my mode here for the layer, and I'm going to make it darken only. Uh, I can change the opacity down to about 50%. And then I can hit my eraser, pick the one of the fuzzy erasers, change the... Yeah, it's too small. 
change the size to something a little larger, say something like this, around 380, and make sure hardness and force are down. So now, I only want to affect the cloud layer, make sure that that's selected, then I'm going to go in and I'm going to start at the center and start deleting. And I want to let it creep somewhat up the sides, but not a whole heck of a lot. And when I'm done, I've got that. Marvelous. So I export that. And you can do that a couple of times and make your, your dirt a couple of different colors. And then I also recommend, of course, throwing in a white background and exporting it as gray shade. Discard changes. And then when you project it onto your bridge, again, I just used the uh, neck or the upper hull uh, texture, hit plus down here, renamed it bridge, changed the grayscale and, and color maps to the bridge maps that we just made. And everything else is already set because we're using an already existent set of maps, right? So when you render this, It looks kind of like the rest of the ship. It's got the same dirt around the edges, just like on the BC deck. So there's dirt around the edges coming in. It gets less and less towards the center. Uh, the I did the BC deck the same way. There's the BC deck. So here's my exported UV map. Then I just did space dirt around the edges. Oh, how to do that. All right. Okay, so I wanted to put dirt around the edge. So come up here and there's a fuzzy selection tool. Click outside to get all of this around here. Right? Create a new layer. I'm going to call this my tutorial space dirt. Okay, great. So now it's fine, but it's going to, anything we fill will be out here unless you hit control I and that reverses the selection. Now what's selected is inside. So now we can go to our colors, pick something brown like dirt and then uh, edit and stroke. Make it five or 10, whatever. Hit stroke and you get brown stuff. Okay, great. So I'm gonna go to my square selection tool, click once, gets rid of everything. You can go to uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just increase this until you're happy with the brown. Okay, I'm going to tell it all right. And then I would set this to say darken only and get rid of my saucer. And we've got some dirt around the edges. And you can, you know, I went in with uh, one of these things uh, and delete, right? And just Delete random sections here. Marvelous. Now, of course, I imported um, Alan Sinclair's fabulous uh, drawings, just as we have before. And I scaled it up to match my tutor my saucer uh, my bc deck right and so then i created some blank squares and called them things like you know red square marvelous so here's our red box all right so red box red box b 
yellow box, red box too. Okay, great. And so here's my, I've got my red square selected. Here's Alan's plans. I go in, I grab my tutorial colors. Here's our red, which almost looks purplish. Grab my square selection tool, put it right in the middle because for whatever reason, you don't get a lot of selection here. When you stroke, you stroke on both sides of whatever you've selected. So edit, stroke selection, five is good, stroke, and then just click somewhere. And you've got a red outline. Marvelous. I'm going to make a new blank one. I'm going to call it yellow square. All right. And I'm going to pull it actually underneath my red square that we just made. All right. So now I'm going to go up here, change this to yellow. And I'm going to grab my square selector. I'm going to... Now I'm not on the same layer. Remember, I'm on the layer below. I just want to make sure that I definitely get inside the red square. So I'm going to take my paint bucket. I'm going to fill that area selection. Click somewhere else. And because it's below the red square, the red square is still perfect. And the inside is filled with yellow. When I did the same with the uh, red box in the back, I deleted the back half and I copied the uh, circumference, the, uh, the curve of the back end here. Why? Because when you are looking straight down like this, that winds up being uh, squarish. So here's what I mean. Let's... It's not what I want. Where is, here we go. I gotta have a better one than that. Here, here, this one. Very good, very much like, uh, <laughs> that's the one I'm looking for. <coughs> Anybody familiar with the Corbomite Maneuver going to be familiar with this angle. And if we either go to materials here, better yet, textures, I think. But materials will do. See that, how that looks squarish? That's because I have it actually rounded. And if you want better than that, like on my previous model, what I did was, and I'll be showing you this in, in a little bit, I actually modeled the marking so that I could control where it, where it was as an actual piece. I just uh, shrink wrapped it against the surface of uh, of the BC deck. But if we render that, I'll come back when the rendering is done. Of course, I'm impatient. We don't really need the whole render, but you can actually see now uh, the BC deck and the bridge, how they look. And they've got the same shininess and dirt and specularity as the rest of the hull because we simply copied the settings from, uh, from texture to texture. So uh, this, oh, I wanted to point out, according to uh, Gary Kerr and uh, the restoration team, that in 2017 uh, worked on the 11 foot model. They researched the colors. There is no grid line uh, inside this area. I think I went over that when we uh, went over how to uh, make the texture for the upper saucer. But the color is just slightly darker than the rest of the hull. So, uh, but there's no grid line inside. There's just the, and, and the two red lines disappear under the BC deck and under the linear accelerator. All right, moving on. The next, 
the next most difficult thing to texture. These squares. All right. So we've got these rectangular areas on the inside of the warp pylons, right? There's four of them top to bottom. And I just had you use cubes that we extended out to the right size and then rotated and put in place. All you need is one. And if you... Uh, Save everything here. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of my mirror. Control three. And I'm trying to remember here. I think this is like 40, 43 or 47 degrees. Rotate 43. Nope. Because, Eric, you want bounding box center. You want shift, alt, shift, control, alt, C, origin to geometry. Now, rotate 43. Not quite. Rotate 47. That's the ticket. All right. So, 47 degrees. <clears throat> and, of course... I tabbed into it and I exported it uh, to uh, get a UV uh, image. I imported that into uh, GIMP. <sighs> and I deleted all of these holes. I did that by, of course, rendering them out. So if I go back to Blender... It's another one of our arrays, and you can make one. Actually, it's two arrays. But, uh, technically, it's four. I'll show you what I mean. A to deselect. And let's just go to a clean spot here. Shift A. We're going to add a circle. And I made my circle 36 degrees. It doesn't have to be really... Uh, it doesn't have to be really detailed. 36 is more than enough. And if I tab into this, though, you should see verts at the top and bottom and left and right. And that's going to work against me because I want to extend this into a pill shape. Um, here's what I mean. See, these things are rounded, but they're long. So it's not a circle. It's like a pill. So what I do is I rotate this. Now, if I did it 10, every vert would just switch with another vert. So rotate it 5 degrees, right? And then tab back into it. And now I can actually grab half of this. So I'm going to tab, and I'm going to control A, location. I just killed my blender. So you can see why you should always save your work. Anyway. All right. <clears throat> Do what we were doing before. Shift A, mesh, circle, 36, rotate, 5, tab, A to deselect. B, grab either the upper or lower half, and then grab Y. And make a long, thin pill shape. And I think that's pretty similar to what we saw, just scale is way too large. So tab, shift, Control Alt C, origin to geometry, and it puts the origin right in the center. And we're going to scale this down. Now, it doesn't really matter if we've got it matched yet, but um, I'm going to go here.
Okay, so I've got these rectangles. I'm going to grab one of these, and I'm going to shift S, cursor to selected. Oh, actually, what I really want, tab. I want to pick that, shift S, cursor to selected. There we go. Tab out. And I'm going to shift S again after selecting my pill. And I'm going to take selection to cursor. Okay, great. I'm going to scale that down. Z. Marvelous. There's actually a 19 uh, from cut edge to cut edge here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an array, of course. Oh, but first, hang on. Right now, this is just a circle. So it's not going to do what we want. We're going to have to pick, say, four verts, F to make a face, Pick one side and just hit F, 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 F until it's finished. Pick the other side. F, 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 F. I think it was Dare Romer 2000 who gave me that. Thank you. Which is the Roman in German. And then I went here and I picked black just to make it easy for me. And tab out. Okay, great. So now if I get rid of my that square so now all I've got is Alan's drawing in our little our little pill I'm gonna go to the background again turn this up to one and make it white okay so that way if I go to rendered mode it'll be black and the background will be white perfect just what I want um oh sorry okay so there we go. And we'll make this smaller in just a moment. And I want to bring this back. Notice in the same row, so not this alternating row. From here to here, there's like four, there's like three, uh, room for three, three pills in the middle. One, two, three. So I'm going to go to a row. Oh, um, control A. Let's do location, control A, rotation, control A, scale. All right, marvelous. So this is now normalized. I'm going to go here, grab array. We've got two, and we know we need 19. And I want there to be room enough for three of these pills in the center, so we make our skip four, right? Now let's scale this. And if I bring back in my box, my rectangle, what I want is that this is halfway through here. So if you take a look at that image, these things go out right to the edge. You can actually see where there's like half of them cutting into the edge here and in the bottom and all around. So we're going to do the same thing. So if I scale this, good. The edge of this is cutting this pill in half. The edge of this is cutting this pill in half. And I've situated it about halfway in. So that's good so far. I'm going to scoot out. Oh. <sighs> All right, so now I've got my unrotated, my non-rotated uh, square here. I've got my 19 pills here. So what I want, matter of fact, let's move this here. All right, now we're alone. Cool, seven. 
so we can see exactly how long this thing is. We're going to add another array. This time, we're going to go down here, and we're going to make this zero. And this, we're going to make, I think it's like one and a half. Let's compare that to this. Yeah, I'd say it's about a half of the, the length of one of these things in between or something similar. So making it one and a half is just about right. And all you have to do is go here to your count. Make sure you can see the, the top of your rectangle. And just start increasing this until you get one row at least a you know, partially above. So I'm going to grab this in the Y direction and move it so that they're about even top and bottom. Great stuff. Now, I'm going to duplicate this. So Shift D. And then I'm going to zoom in real close. And I'm going to grab that duplicated one. And I'm going to, uh, real scientific, I'm going to move it so it's approximately halfway between these two rows, right? And kind of halfway up and down here. So grab Y. Looks about right. And if we zoom out, I don't even need that last row there, so I can bring this count down here. And am I outside there? Yes, I am. I can, I can bring down this count here. All right, cool. So now I'm going to apply, apply, and I'm going to grab the other ones. I'm going to apply and apply, and then I'm going to grab Shift, right mouse click, so I've got both of them selected, Control J, and I've got a single unified object. Now I'm going to move this down here. Just going to go here where I've got just the object. There's nothing else. And I'm going to grab uh, background. Strength is one. It's white. Okay, and these are black, right? Did we give them material? Yes, we did. And if we tab into them, right, they are, they are actual objects. So now when I render this, here's a cheat. We're going to get this. These little pill shapes. Now they're black, and you could literally use them as a texture with the correct background color if you want, but I, I like for these to be actually uh, a template for a transparency map. So I want to map this to our rectangles, and wherever this is black, the rectangles need to be clear. All right, so what I did to make this simple for myself, Shift, Control, Alt, C, origin to geometry right in the middle, rotate 90 degrees, right? Shift, A, add a camera. Okay, camera, orthographic mode, take this down to one, other way, Eric, I will never learn. Okay, so kind of centered like that. I'm going to go here, make sure that this is a decent size, render preset, and I picked HDTV. So that's 1920 by 1080. And if I render that out, I get my pill shapes. Now they're going in the wrong direction, but that's okay. I'll come back when that's done. Okay, so when it's rendered out, if you can imagine this face on and turned on its side, 
it should look fairly similar to this. So F3, save it. I called it uh, something like warp engine rectangle grill. Right, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just save it and go into GIMP, right? I set, so here was what I imported. This is just the UV for that rectangular section. And yes, I projected it from view. Marvelous. Then I had my rendered holes. And what I did was, uh, I, I tried this several ways with a hull gray. I just, well, better to show you. So let's create a, a blank uh, uh, layer. And I'm going to call this uh, uh, my white layer. Whoops. And I'm going to color it white. Fine. I'm going to go up here, pick white, paint bucket, fill that area. Terrific. Turn that off for a moment. Come back down to our rendered warp squares, right? And I'm going to do a fuzzy select and pick the outside. But of course, that's not what we want. Just like we did before, we're going to control I and invert the selection. I'm going to turn on my white layer and select it. And then I'm going to edit cut. I'm going to turn off my rendered image uh, and my, you, um, I'm going to yeah, pick the square selection, right? All right. This is not letting me. There we go. All right, so now I've deleted here, but I could, if I wanted to, fill in the sides with white. I don't think it's necessary. But I am going to take my opacity down to 50% just for the moment because I want to see how it lines up with my exported square. And let's see here. View... I'm at 100%, so I'm going to jump to 200% so that we can look a little closer. You can see the edge of the exported UV map. Actually, it'll be easier if I just do this. goes halfway through the circles, just like what I wanted. Oh, pretty close. Let's grab my white layer, four-way button, and just move it. Whoops. Move it slightly to the left. All right, cool. So we'll get those cutout divots and top and bottom. I guess I can move this down just a little bit there. All right, so that's pretty close. Now, here's the kicker. Get rid of your squares. Take this back up to 100%. And then we want to export this as a PNG. Oh, but first, um, go to channels here above your layers and see if there's an alpha. There should be because we imported the thing as a PNG, so there should be alpha here. There is. Great. So now all my other layers are turned off. Just file, export as, and pick uh, PNG if it's not already selected for you. You can scroll down here. Where are you? PNG. Bingo. And then you would hit export. You know, name it whatever you want. Warp squares. Uh, white transparent. Okay, great. And just hit export. Marvelous. Back to Blender. Oh, I had to rotate that. Shoot. When you're in uh, GIMP, this was originally going left to right. Uh, you can choose layer, transform, and rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise. And you'll 
get them in the correct direction. All right, back to Blender. So now, what I did was, F11, I don't really need this anymore. That was just to render something, so move it out of the way. Right? I don't need this camera either. Move it out of the way. We're going to go back to where we have our square 7. All right. So, I had originally given it a medium gray um Not a texture, but a material. I'm going to hit plus. I'm going to call this a pylon rectangle with transparency. Okay, with trans. Control left. So we've got our shader. <coughs> Sorry, hang on one second. All right, so we've got where is my pylon? Pylon rectangle with transparency. Okay. Why is this already here? All right. We should have this when we get here because this is what the medium gray looks like. Right? We've got a color. It's diffuse. And then, actually, this shouldn't even be here. All right. This should be, when we find it, it should be like this. All right. So we've got... A diffuse shader going into our material. All right, we're going to want a transparency in here as well for a texture. So, a uh, shader, I mean. So, transparency. Pick transparency, pop that here. We're going to want to mix it. So, shift A and shader, and we're going to pick uh, shader color. No, texture. Mix. Mix shader. Ah, there we go. Yeah, it's shader. Mix shader. Throw this in here. Bring this down to the bottom. Throw in our transparency here. Now we need something that's going to govern what becomes transparent. So I'm going to hit 7 here. We're going to zoom in on what we are texturing. And we're going to add in an image texture. So shift A, input, no, texture, image texture, bingo. So here's an image texture, open up. We're going to go to our tutorial textures and we're going to pick our warp squares with white transparency PNG image. We're going to take the alpha for that and put it into the factor. If we come over here and go to a rendered view, we see through the dark gray. Sorry about that. My cat was telling me that it was time for his aerosol. He has asthma. All right, as you can see, you can see right through this, and this only works because the image texture that you're using is a PNG file which th there are a couple of things uh, that will do this for you. Uh, TIFF, PNG, and uh, Photoshop files. But um, now, all you have to do... Sorry. Is take your new square, your new rectangle here, And I would rotate this. Rotate negative 47 degrees. 
and then I would simply replace all the others in mirror, uh, just like you did before. So if I go to 7, we can see that this is not bad. But <clears throat> just in case you have forgotten, Shift S, cursor to center, and then Shift Control Alt C, and we're going to do origin to 3D cursor. Okay, so now the origin for this rectangle is over here. <clears throat> and then I would go back to my modifier, turn on my mirror modifier, get rid of X, make it Y, and it should be perfectly lined up, and it is. <clears throat> so I rendered out a couple of uh, images, and here's what my warp pylons look with their texture. I included a little grid, as we talked about before, just to give it some semblance of uh, size. I've got my uh, rectangles with their transparency here. And here's the thing. Here's one of Chris Trice's shots of the actual model. This is after the 1980s the repainting, uh, their, quote, restoration, end quote. So I'm not interested in the colors uh, and the dirt, which is too pronounced. But these are the original pieces. So let's see, does mine look similar? And I think it does. Uh, I've thrown in extra grid lines and such, and I may need to tone them down. But the real thing my imitation. So not bad. Certainly good enough for, uh, for our tutorial. Um, let's see. Don't need this anymore. And <clears throat> now that we've textured the upper saucer, the lower, both warp engines, both pylons. We threw on our transparency for our grids. We've got the engineering deck done. We've got the rust ring done. And we've got materials for just about everything else. Uh, although it's actually a little too early to do some real renders, I wanted to do some renders just to see if we were getting close. So here are two shots. The one on the right is from Journey to Babel. The one on the left is, is our tutorial USS Enterprise. Now, are they exactly the same? No. But are they close enough to get across the idea that what you're trying to render is the USS Enterprise? I say yes. Um, I think it's looking pretty damn good and pretty close to the original. Now, if I was to throw in some blue spill from the blue screen and mimic the camera exactly, the camera lens, and throw in a star background, uh, it, it will look even closer. But this is very close for my money. Uh, and we've just got a little more uh, texturing to do and some signs to make. But we're going to do those. We couldn't do the, the banners on the warp engines because we have the left and right side of each engine looking exactly the same. So if I threw a banner on there, you'd see it on the inside as well, and it wasn't on the inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to model some of the signage, the remaining signage on the top and bottom of the engineering deck, of the engineering hall, and on both sides of the warp engines. We'll do that next time, and at that point, we're going to call it finished. So we're almost done. Uh, don't forget to save your work and uh, and keep uh, keep going. This is a, a render I did imitating an angle from the Corbomite maneuver. Again, I didn't I didn't bother with matching the lighting, but I, I did this for this section here so that we could see uh, how shiny the shiny part of the upper saucer is and how it merges into the dirt section uh, on the back and I also wanted to see the BC deck and and how my bridge would render out and I think this is looking pretty good and then I did uh, this as well <clears throat> the oh yeah I meant to show you the 
uh, triangles underneath. You, you do the same thing. You control seven to see the uh, enterprise from the bottom, control seven. And then you highlight your triangle. We don't need this. The material will be fine for the bump. <coughs> um, you know, tab into it, split your screen in half, turn this into a, a UV editor, and then, uh, you know, delete whatever's there, and you will get your UV, especially if you do U project from view. And then what I, I did was I rotated this and scaled it so that it was straight up and down and in the middle. And I took that into uh, GIMP. So I don't need this. We can close this. We can close this. And all that's left is, is this. So here was the... Uh, here's our UV map. And what I did, of course, was I put on a hull gray. And then I, I really didn't need it because I, I created uh, just one whole layer with dark gray. And then what I did was I created what was called... I, I, I actually was experimenting with this, so I really screwed up. I made this inner gray. What I did was I did it just like we talked about before. I grabbed my fuzzy selection. I grabbed the outside, control I to invert it, and then uh, created a new layer, right? And I called it, you know, inner gray. Actually, I, I don't put spaces in. Okay, inner gray. And I'm going to call this one inner gray too, just to be safe. And then what I did was I came over and I grabbed the uh, light gray here. Told it OK, grabbed the paint bucket, and filled it. Fine. Um, in and of itself, it's fine. It's, it's too thick. It fills the whole thing from front to back. So I've still got the selection active. I'm going to create a new on top of that. I'm going to call this inner gray. I'm going to call this outer gray. So I don't need that. I need this outer. Outer gray number two. Tell it OK. And now I'm going to grab our dark gray. I'm going to tell it all right. And edit stroke selection. This says five, but I'm going to make this ten. Stroke. OK, great. Now, I'm going to bring my, my inner gray two up here. And... Here's my outer gray. I'm going to click this selection box and just click in here to deselect everything. Now, here's the thing. I only did this for the stroke. And I'm going to go back to my paint bucket, and I've still got my dark selected, so I'm just going to fill in the outside of the outer gray. Well, okay, it's being difficult. Let's make a new layer. Outer gray 3. And just... Paint bucket that. Why Why are you giving me such a rough time? Okay. Doesn't matter. <coughs> so I'm going to take my outer gray 3 and I'm going to pull it all the way down here. Because if I get rid of it and put it back in, see, at least I've got it filled. So anything around the edge is going to be darker gray. File, export as, and then, you know, call it, I don't know, triangle, uh, triangle texture or something. And we go back here. We go to our materials. And, of course, I pick my neck. Uh, texture, hit plus, called it triangle, right? And then went here and changed it to triangle. I didn't even bother to make uh, one with a white background. I just took the same image texture, hooked it up to my RGB and to my diffuse, 
left uh, the glossy to be the same uh, reflection and, and color as the rest of the hull. And everything else, of course, is already there, although this should be 0.75. And this should be 0.3. Okay, great. Now, let's go back out. Tab out. I no longer need this. Join. And if we... Yeah, pick a camera and render. Be right back. You can already start to see some of the uh, triangle and uh, the lower hull, which uh, we've already covered out of texture that. Um, and of course, if you don't like how this is looking, you can tweak it any way you like. You can make a grayscale map, which I'm considering. Uh, if I create a gradient where it's brighter in the center and darker towards the uh, ends, uh, I think that that would probably more accurately reflect what the original looked like. And heck, you can make the uh, inner triangle actually literally the same color as, uh, gray as the hull because I think the, uh, uh, the difference in the grays was lost on screen. It almost looked like a, uh, a just a dark triangle triangular area. Uh, you shouldn't have uh, any grid pattern in it. And in theory, those are supposed to be um, uh, landing pads, like skid pads. So that if you ever had to uh, get break off the uh, saucer section to land on a planet, uh, I think those two landing pads, along with like the neck or something, or something that descended from the neck, uh, would become landing pads for the primary hull. And they actually used uh, that maneuver in Star Trek Generations with the Enterprise D. Uh, you saw it uh, plow. Uh, into the surface of a planet. And of course, uh, for first contact, we had the Enterprise E and they were giving it a shakedown. <coughs> but if you've got the uh, material set up like uh, what we've discussed and you've applied them, you should be able to render out an, an almost complete Enterprise. We're going to put in uh, about five, six pieces of signage next time, I think. Uh, they're just little tiny extra model pieces that are very simplistic. And um, uh, we, will, we will finish up the model next time. Thank you. Don't forget to save your progress. And I hope uh, the Enterprise is turning out the way you, the way you hoped. Talk to you all later. Bye.